Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for today. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we exalt you. And we welcome those of you who are joining us in this journey with the Lord as he walks with us, he talks with us. During this time of reflection, where we just take a few minutes to turn our hearts towards God Almighty, turn our, our eyes towards him, to bring to him our needs, to listen to his word, to pray together, to be inspired by a word from the Lord. That's what the time of reflection is all about. And I want to welcome you. My name is Peter Burnett. I am sitting in here today to just share these times with you. I'm the president of Emmanuel Caribbean University and get to be a, a part of what the Lord is doing here at Faith Temple Assembly of God at the Faith Broadcasting Network. And of course, that's where we are coming to you from uh, here in on Princess Street in Montego Bay, Jamaica. If you're anywhere in the environment or online, you can check them out. You can come to the services. But this is one of the ministries coming out of Faith Temple Assembly of God. And if you're on channel 253 on the Cornwall Communication Channel, I want to welcome you. That is an ongoing uh, feed. You can hear different things and different ministry coming out of the church right on that channel. But there's also the social media platform. I want to welcome those of you on YouTube. Faith Temple AOG. Remember to subscribe. Remember to share in your WhatsApp group. Send to your friends and family. And also if you're on Facebook, remember to like and to copy and paste to your page, to your story. Let's get the word about the uh, time of reflection out so everybody will be able to have a chance to receive it and to be able to be encouraged in the word of God. That's why the Lord has brought the revelation of these various uh, ministries and various modes of communications so wherever you are in the world if you're in the diaspora if you are somewhere in the u.s or canada or anywhere in the world as a diaspora you're living outside of jamaica you know they say more people live outside of jamaica than in jamaica so wherever you are thank you for joining us thank you for being with me here on a time of reflection of course the host pastor here is bishop conrad pitkin and we thank god for him and for all the workers in the, in the staff and in the uh, control room and all those who push this ministry forward. And there are the numbers, 876-952-3436. You can call me during the program. You can call even after this program and we will, you leave a message. Or if you find someone, they'll pray with you as you call in. Someone will reach out again with you, 876-952-3436 or 876-979. 5856. That's uh, 876-979-6856. And of course, the website is there as well. Thank you, Lord. Are you ready to pray? Are you ready to worship? Are you ready to take a few minutes right here in the middle of this cloudy day? We thank God for the, the protection from Hurricane Ian. Rather. Ian is Islam, some of our friends and family over there in Florida. So we're going to pray for them today. Uh, but thank God for his protection for, from, uh, from this side of the island. I know there's maybe some flooding more on the eastern side. We thank God for what he's doing for the protection there. But let's pray. Uh, well, let's go to a time of worship. And uh, this song is by Esteban Lindsay. It says, I'll trust you, Lord. Have you ever had a, had a storm come in your life? Ever had a hurricane? Have a crisis, a situation come? We know we can trust in the Lord. Lift your heart up. Sing along with him. Let's worship together with Esteban here on Time of Reflection. God bless you. I know that faith is easy when everything's going out. Now can you still believe in me when your life's a living The things around you seems to quickly fade away. There's just one thing I really want to know. Will you let go? Will you stand on my word? Sad, oh my child, when it's 
seems impossible. I trust you, Lord. Would you believe? I trust you, Lord. Every promise that I made, you will receive. I will trust you, Lord. Come on, why don't you just say that, Lord, I will trust you. Hallelujah. I will, I will, I, I, Peter Burnett, what, what is your name? What, who, who, what, what are you facing? What is your situations? I, you know, the I, the I man, I woman, I boy, I girl. I just sense we need to pray a little bit. There, there's a lot of um, 
hopelessness in our country. A lot of a lack of trust in God. A lot of people have lost trust in the word of God, in the Bible. A lot of people have lost trust in the church. A lot of people have lost trust in the preached word of God, the taught word of God. Some of you that had grandmothers and grandfathers and mothers and fathers, or you probably grew up in the church, who, and you were familiar with the concept of trusting in God. But today there are so many competitions, so many other lovers, you could say, vying and wooing and seeking after our trust, our love. You know, when you get married, that's one of the things that you stand before someone who says, I, I give you my trust. My, you, you, you put your trust. We, we become a very jaded people, very cynical. We don't expect good to happen. Even we, we look at our children and we look at our young men, we look at our young people, we look at the nation, we look at Jamaica. We've lost trust. But this scripture, this song, and what we're going to talk about today, responsibility for the next generation. It's saying, I trust you, Lord. I trust you. Father, today, we've been bombarded by so many bad news and so many of us have had so many bad experiences in life. Sometimes, Lord, we have ventured out to put our little toe on a little our pinky and we have we've put, our water, put our foot in the water to trust friends and to trust church members or trust pastor or trust a leader and lord many are listening to me have been burned they have been taken advantage of in their trust and lord they have gone back into their hole they have gone back in their shell like a turtle they have gone back into the place of protection lord lord i cry out to you today heal the broken trust the broken heart of your people. Restore trust and faith in God. Father, I ask you to bring healing to those eras where we have stopped trusting you, Lord. We have removed the great faith and confidence of our mothers and fathers, of our forefathers, and even the trust we once have in you, Lord. We find it going lower and lower. Father, we know there's a lack of trust because of the, there's a lack of joy. We know there's a lack of trust because there's a lack of confidence. We know there's a lack of trust because hope is missing. Because we are not bold about the future. We know there's a lack of trust because it has affected our prayer life. It has affected the way us reading your word. It has affected the joy and the excitement we have of gathering together around the word, to study the word, to pray, to seek your face. Father, the lack of trust we have towards you have been seen when very few of us show up for Bible study. Very few are reading their Bibles every day. Very few are praying and having a personal devotion every day. Lord, we, we know we are losing our trust in you because so many of us are not witnessing, not telling the gospel story to our friends and our family. Father, we are losing trust in your great power, in your great might and its evidence because, Lord, we are not engaging the sinners. We are not engaging the bad boys or the bad girls or those we think are so far gone those who are causing the problems in our community. Lord, we have ignored them. We're not talking to them. We're not directly confronting and speaking to them and sharing the love of God to them. We're not being your hands and your feet. Forgive us, O oh God. We are doing this because we have lost trust. We're not sure. We are unsure about the future. We are unsure about what's going to happen. Lord, we have heard the news from all the news media. We have heard the prophecies from all kind of secular and spiritual men and women. All kind of gurus. Everybody, Lord. We have seen the movies about the end of the world. We hear about climate change and we hear about this change. And Lord, Father, Lord, we have turned over 
the future to the hands of men and to the hands of the devil. The enemy has been trying to manipulate our minds. Father, today we come before you. We ask you to forgive us for trusting in the arm of flesh. Forgive us for trusting in the strength of men. Forgive us for trusting in money, in science. We have put intellectuals above you. Forgive us, Lord. Oh, Lord, like Joshua, we say today, as for me and my house, we will trust the Lord. We will serve the Lord. Why don't you join me right now, wherever you are. You may be in the middle of sickness. You may be in the middle of a crisis. I want you to say a commitment with your heart. Say, Lord, I will trust you, Lord. Yes, forgive me, Lord. Some of you were in church, you... You gave up your trust in God and you, you, start, you moved in with a man, moved in with a woman. You abandoned your walk with God. You started putting your trust in an individual because of a promise for money or a promise for security. Today, come back. Come back to Jesus. Mothers, begin to raise your children again in the word of God. Begin to do family devotion again. Begin to bring the family again around the family table. Begin to bring everybody in your house. They're going to live in your house. Bring them around devotion. I will trust you, Lord. I wonder if we could play that song again. I don't know if the producer can help me with that, but I think that's just a powerful song. I will trust you, Lord. Right where you are, I want you to lift your voice and join in with the song. Come on. Hallelujah. You said Yes. Yes, bring it up even, even more. Come on. I want you to join in that song and make a declaration of your commitment, a renewal of trust in the Lord. Will you trust me, child? Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, respond to the Lord. What if it is? Will you trust him? What if you cry? Will you trust me? Come on, say, Lord, I'll trust you. What if you lift your hands right where you are. Hurt the first time that you cry. Hallelujah. Will you trust me? I'll trust you. What if you call my name? I trust you, Lord. And don't feel Sometimes you may not feel any difference. You may not see any circumstance change. God is lifting a burden off your off your shoulder today. God is lifting the burden off somebody's shoulder this morning. Where else can I go? I trust you. I trust you. Who else can I turn to? Hallelujah. 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 I trust you. I will trust you, Lord. I will. I made that declaration. Trust right where you are. Lord. I will. I, I, Peter Burnett, I will. I make it a decision of my mind. I'm in alignment with God. Yes, yes, trust you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I will trust you. In my darkest night. Yes. I trust you, Lord. I trust you. Every minute, every hour, every day. Oh, you know I will. I will. In all my pain, Come on, listen. I will. I will. I trust you, Lord. In my office, in my home, you wherever you are, I will. I trust you, Lord. I will restore. Wonderful. I trust you, Lord. Every day, every yes. minute, every yes. hour. Be renewed today. Be refreshed. Be refreshed. I will trust you. Oh, my sadness. Thank you. I trust you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I will trust you. I will trust you.
I will trust you, Lord. I'll trust you, Lord. Yes. I'll trust you, Lord. I'll follow you, Lord. I'll trust you, Lord. Young men, trust God. Young women, trust God. Our brother Esteban Lindsay for supporting us there as we prayed. I will trust you, Lord. You know, there was a man named Ezekiel. I've been studying on this Ezekiel for the last several weeks. In 2 Kings chapter 20, the story is told that this man was a king. And this king Ezekiel had a sickness. And he cried out to God and God delivered him. He trusted God. And even before that, he was surrounded by a great king called Sennacherib. And this king had many, many more armies and many more mighty men than he, Hezekiah, as king in Judah. Here again, he cried out to the Lord, trusted in the Lord, and the Lord delivered him. I could go through this Bible and read your stories after stories. And these are not make it up stories. These are historical encounters of ordinary people in a variety of circumstances. But they trusted in God. They had a choice to make. They could trust in the arm of flesh. They could trust in governments. They could trust in their own intellect. They could trust in the money they have in their hand or in the bank or the money they hope to get. Or they could trust in God. And there's a clear example throughout history. Clear example of testimonies of people's life today. One group of people who trusted God and another group of people who trusted the arm of flesh, money, the systems of the world. And you can see those who trust in the Lord. They shall, be, they shall be, the Bible says, like Mount Zion. They shall never be moved. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of Matthew that the, the wise man built his house on the rock. That's trusting in God. Build his family, build his life build his relationship on the rock. And the Bible says the wind came. It didn't say the wind did not come. It says the wind came, the hurricane, the crisis of life. Problems came. Those who trusted in God were those who built their lives on the rock. So they were those who did not trust in God. They were like the man who says, you know what, I have all this money I'm going to build another extension on my house. And the Lord says, thou fool, today thy soul will be required of you. They built their life on the sand. Say, so, well, I have a tourism job, so I'm good now. I, am, I have my bachelor's, I have my master's, I'm good now. I have a husband, I have a wife, I have a man who loves me, or a woman who loves me. I have a relationship, I have friends, I'm getting money, my bank account is full, I'm good now. Sand. Those are all sand. All sand. The interesting thing about building with sand is that those who build their house on the rock also use sand. But the issue is they didn't just build only with sand. There is sand plus block plus iron and all the stuff you need to put it together. So it's not just the money. That's the sand alone. You've got to put God. You've got to trust in him. And so this man, Hezekiah, in 2 Kings chapter 20, he trusted God. God brought him out. God delivered him from the sickness. But then he, he made a mistake here, which is a lot of us do this after we've gotten the blessings of God. Can I tell you that after you've been blessed by God, 
That's one of the most dangerous times in your spiritual walk. When you get the job you've been praying for, it's one of the most dangerous times in your spiritual walk. When you get married to that woman or that man you've been hoping, for, that's the most dangerous time in your life. When you have the child you have been praying for, when you get the answers to your prayers, what you do next really reveals the true nature of your heart. It's the most dangerous time. That's when the devil comes and he says, Hath God said? That's when the enemy tries to get a division between you and God when your prayers have been answered. So when your prayers are answered and you get up in church and give your testimony and everybody's happy for you and you say, praise the Lord, I'm healed, I'm blessed, I've got a new job, i got a new house, you know, my, I get the visa, all this is going on. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Because look what happened. After God healed Hezekiah, after God blessed Hezekiah, after God delivered him from Sennacherib, guess who showed up? The Babylonians showed up. And the influence of the Babylonians was invited into Hezekiah's house. And it affected him, it affected his children, and it affected the next generation. So the Babylonians showed up in 2 Kings chapter 20. And they came and they brought Hezekiah all kind of silver and gold. And they came to him after he had been sick. And they heard about the great prosperity and the great success of Hezekiah. So they came and Hezekiah was attentive to them. Listen to that word. He was attentive to them. Can I say to you, don't be attentive to the Babylonians. Instead of spending time when you've been blessed with a new television and cable in your house, I say, well, now I'm blessed. I can stay home longer. No, still go to church. Still go to Bible study. Oh, now you have a car. So now you are blessed. So now you can go other places other than that. No, still drive the blessing to church. He was more attentive to the Babylonians. And he showed them all the house. He showed them all of his treasures. He showed them all the silver, all the gold. He told them even the armory. In other words, he brought the Babylonians into his confidence. Can I say to young people, to young men, to men and women, don't lose your trust in God. Do not put your trust in the Babylonian systems of the world. In other words, in worldliness, in sinners and ungodliness. Friends, you've got, to, you've, got to, you've got to hold firm. The Bible says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. You need to make a decision in your heart. Will you embrace the counsel of the ungodly now that you have some pennies to rum together? Now you have a car. Now you are blessed. Now you have been healed. Now God has answered your prayer. Now you are more prosperous. Now you are living in a nicer house. Now God has done all these things for you. Who are you listening to? Who is your counselor now? And your people say, well, the church don't know anything to tell me about financial management. Says who? The church don't have anything to tell me about wealth management. Says who? The church is really not able to tell me anything about marriage or about... Says who? When you ignore the trust of God and his church and the word of God, you are giving your trust away to someone else. Trust the Lord. There's no way you can be a responsible person for the next generation before God without putting your trust in God. Because the, if you put your trust in the arm of flesh, they will not last to the next generation. So the Bible says Hezekiah lost focus. Don't lose focus. Don't lose focus. He should have protected the silver, protected the gold, protected the treasures so that they can be preserved for the next generation. He lost focus. He was attentive 
to the applause of the Babylonian. He was trying to impress the Babylonians. The Babylonians did not give him the blessing. It came from God. But yet, he was more attentive to them. There was nothing in his house or in all his dominion that Hezekiah did not open up to them. Nothing didn't allow the influence of ungodliness. There was no line between what's godly and godly anymore. There was no sense of righteousness. There was no sense of what's, what's godly anymore. The, the world system, people say, well, now we are prosperous. Now we are living in the 21st century. Now we are modern. Now we are advanced. Now we are sophisticated people. Now we are traveling. We don't live in the country no more. We are in the city. Now we are modern people. We, 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 you know, so now everything is open. You know, Babylonian principles everywhere. Got to draw the line. Got to be more attentive. I want you to realize the consequences of this. One of the consequences is that it was wrong in the eyes of God. You cannot mix ungodliness with godliness. Call it modern or what you want. If it is not in line with the word of God, it's not for you. It's not of God. That's if you trust in the Lord. It's a trust issue. It's a trust issue. The word of the Lord is sure. Like silver tried in the, in the furnace of the earth, purified seven times. The word of the Lord is sure. The word of the Lord is pure. The word of the Lord is consistent. The principles of living, the principles of being responsible from one generation to the next generation is still the same. If one generation allow the ungodly principles of the world, the Babylonian systems of the world, to seep into their lives, into their families, they open up all of their treasures. Nothing is sacred anymore. Everything is out there. If one generation does that, you are undercutting the opportunity for victory for your children and your children's children. So part of that responsibility is to be attentive to God more than we are to the things of the world. Be attentive to the things of God. Be attentive to the principles of God. And last week I showed you that Manasseh, which was the son that reigned after Hezekiah, was one of the wickedest king in Judah. He started to reign when he was only 12 years old. So that meant that Hezekiah did not parent, he did not parent the king Manasseh, his son, properly. During that 15 extra years that God gave him, because God gave him 15 years after he was sick. During that 15 years, he met the Babylonians and he, he was all excited about the new year. He's going on vacation. He's going on a cruise. He's getting up every morning and thanking God for another new day. He's excited because the doctor gave him over to be dead. Now he's alive and he's praising God. He's excited, but he forgot to pay attention to the reason God gave him 15 more years. He had a son, Manasseh, and he was too busy enjoying his extra time to equip Manasseh to rule. So he became one of the most wicked king. In fact, when the Lord prophesied Hezekiah, Hezekiah, because you did these things, behold, this is in verse 16, behold, the days are coming. Behold, the days are coming, verse 17 of 2 Kings, that when all that is in your house, all that your father has accumulated until this day, all of it shall be carried away to Babylon. Nothing shall be left. And they shall take away some of your sons who will descend from you, whom you will beget. And they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. That was the warning of God. 
That was the warning of God to Hezekiah. But it's not just to Hezekiah. It's the warning of God to every generation. Every person have been blessed by God. Every person that you know, you used to live in a one house, your mother prayed, you get to go to teacher college, now you're a big teacher, now you're a big principal, now you're a big policeman, now you are a big clerk, now you move out of country, you have your own life, now you are you have prosperity, now you have an NHT account, now you have you know you have all these blessings have come upon your life. Are you now preparing your children? And are you preserving the blessings that you accumulated from your forefathers in the faith? What are you doing about the next generation? And the prophecy and the word of the Lord is, if you don't do something, you're going to lose them. You're going to lose the gold. You're going to lose the silver. You're going to lose the treasure. Your legacy will be ruined. And I was shocked. The response of Hezekiah, that's why I'm bringing it up today again. Because some of you respond the same way. Hezekiah say, boy, I'm not for my business, that. Boy, I'm not worry about that, you know. God same way, take away all the silver and well, at least I'm not during my lifetime. That's what he said. At least God not going to do it when me living. A them problem. You know, you're going to die and I'm going to die. And if the Lord starries, Jamaica is going to be here for another hundred years. So, well, Pastor Peter, we don't know when the Lord, exactly. You don't know when the Lord is coming back. It could be for another hundred years. But I'm asking you, what are you doing to prepare the next generation to lead? What are you doing to preserve what God gave you? The values he gave you. The blessings he gave you. The teachings he gave you. The organizations that were a blessing to your life. The infrastructures that were a blessing to your life. Even this nation, this democracy that we enjoy that was gifted to you and I. What are you doing to preserve it for the next generation? Hezekiah said, <laughs> Not my problem. Too hard. Too hard. So the thing set. Let's trust the Lord. Let's trust the Lord. Let's go back to trusting the Lord. Let's go back to preparing the next generation to trust the Lord. In Ephesians chapter 6, the Lord says that children ought to obey the parents in the Lord. In the Lord. So that means the parents have got to carry over something about the Lord to communicate to the children so they can be obedient in the Lord. Well, the Lord is not saying, children, obey your parents to steal. Obey, obey your parents to do wrong. No, it says in the Lord. So that means parents... You've got to be able to point to the children and say, this is in the Lord. How will they know? How will they hear? How will they understand? You've got to prepare the next generation. It says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. So there is a right and there is a wrong. Who's going to teach the next generation? He says, children, honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment. With promise that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. Who is teaching our children this? Are we teaching our children that it is the first commandment with the promise? And the promise is when you honor your mother and father. But it's not just our children honoring us. It's also we honoring the God. The values the treasures, the faith of our fathers and our grandmothers and those who went before us in Christ. Are we honoring them? When we turn away from them, when we put our trust in idols and other things instead of God, we are not honoring our mothers and fathers. You know, I say something to the other, a guy the other day, he says, oh, Pastor Peter. I said, why do you keep calling me pastor? 
and you don't let me pastor you. I'm not your pastor. If, you are, if you're willing to be pastored, yeah, then call the person a pastor. Don't just give them the pastor as if you're just buttering them up and give them a nice title. No, that doesn't help anybody. Are you willing to be pastored? Are you willing to be taught the word of God? Are you willing to be discipled into maturity as a Christian? So you also need to honor your fathers. And your children and our children need to honor us. But then I want you to see verse 4. He says, and you fathers... Fathers, it's really speaking about those of us alive in this generation. It would be the Hezekiah generation, if you will. Do not provoke your children to wrath. I'm not provoking nobody. I, listen, I'm a nice father. I go, I do my work. I'm a nice mother. I, this generation, we're hardworking. But the, but the provoking here, my friend, do you know when you have a river and there are no boundaries to the river, it just destroys everything. The difference between a flood and a river are boundaries. When parents set no boundaries, they are setting up their children to be a destructive force in society other than being a river which could be a regenerative force, a supply force. Fish could be there. They can add and not take away. They can be a blessing and not be a hurt to society. But it takes parents to do that. And you've got to be more attentive to your children than you are to the Babylonian things. You've got to be attentive so you can equip them. And what happens is when our children are not given discipline, they become insecure. Let me say that again. Whenever children, whether it's a young kid or a teenager, is not given discipline and pro provided with security, uh, the security of boundaries, the security of home, the security of love, when that is not provided, they become insecure. And they become destructive to themselves and to others. And that's what the Bible says. Don't provoke them to wrath. A lot of social workers and counselors and guidance counselors will tell us so many of our kids are angry. So many in society today are angry because their fathers were not fathers to them. The boundaries were not there. The home was in a mess. There was nothing. They were just thrown out there like wolves. We're here today to say, if you were thrown out there like the wolf, you were thrown out there and just say, survive, guess what? You can trust in God today, and he'll give you a new start. If you are raising up a child, let's begin to put those principles in place. Fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath. How do you go do about raising them in a responsible way? He says, bring them up in the training. In the training. That takes time. You can't be attentive to the Babylonian systems and the Babylonian things of the world and be attentive to training your children. Training your children is not just putting them on the taxi and sending them off to school and let somebody raise them at school and then they come home, do their homework, and you don't spend time. You as the parent, brothers and sisters, you, ladies and gentlemen, will have to spend time personally with the child. Quality time. And quantity time. Both in quality and quantity. You need to be able to look them in the eyes. You need to be able to train them. Training is different from telling. Telling is you do this, do this. Do this, do this. Do. No, no. Training is you're doing it with them. There is personal work together. We are building them up to prepare them for the next generation. And it says admonition. How are you going to admonish someone without you knowing what they are feeling? Knowing what they are going through? A lot of our children are going through trauma. A lot of things. Sometimes a lot of things happen on the, on, in, the, in the taxis, at school, at church. Things happen in one day. Things can change. But how would you know how to admonish them 
or to counsel them if you don't spend time with them. So many of us are so busy trying to make the money that we lose our children. We lose the next generation. Some of you listening to me, you have written off those young men. You have written off. I heard one pastor praying yesterday. He, he, he says, you know what? Lord, we may have to just give up on this generation and go for the children. But that's not the will of God. The Bible says, for God so loved the world, he forgot the adults and just went to save the children. What about the 17 years old? What about the 18? What about the 19 year old young man? What about the 25 year old young man? They're your children. They're my children. They're, we are fathers in this generation. We are responsible for them. We are responsible for those gunmen. We are responsible for the thieves. We are responsible for those scammers. We are responsible for them. In this generation, you and I, we are the Hezekiah generation. We cannot hide our head in the sand and say, well, at least it bad, but it not so bad. At least everybody get touched and, you know, like one guy told me the other day, he says, well, Pastor Peter, everybody have been dead sometime. You give up. Hopelessness. Lack of trust. Selfishness. Selfishness. Hezekiah became selfish. In his prosperous time, God had healed him. He had a miracle. God had blessed him. I mean, blessed his socks off. Became selfish. Focused on what he had. Even to the point where he was sacrificing his son and the next generation. I call upon you in the name of the Lord Jesus today. Don't open up and throw away all the treasures that you have accumulated to this point in your life to the devil and the Babylonian systems of the world. Don't give more attentive to them. Begin to ask the Lord to turn your ship around, to turn the priority of your life. The Bible says you help your children, you do not provoke them to the wrath by bringing them up in training. Put them into school. That's why we have opened up a Christian university. Many schools around here have different after school and, and Bible study and, and children club and all these needs to come back. We need to invest time, time in the next generation. Bring them up. I like that. Bring them up. That indicates a level of personal involvement. Bring them up. Not just send them to church. Bring them to church. Not just send them to a university or college. Help them to get there. Bring them up. Bring them up. Brothers and sisters, what we need and the job that is needed for the transformation of Jamaica, there are not enough government agencies to do it. There are not enough policemen to do it. It's not their job. There are men and women, I believe, whom God has called in every community, in every community, on every lane. I believe, first of all, God has called parents to step up. Parents. And you are responsible as a parent to bring them up, to, to speak into their life, to bring training, to bring admonition. It doesn't matter how old they are. Help them. Pray for them. Engage with them. Bring them up in the fear of the Lord. So Hezekiah didn't do that. He was too busy counting his money. Too busy taking care of all the blessings that he had on his life. He's too busy putting new pictures on Facebook. New poses and where he's eating out and all the fancy stuff going on in his life. He was not attentive enough to Manasseh and to so many others. But it's not just Hezekiah, you know. When you look at Deuteronomy chapter 7, and actually in Deuteronomy chapter 9, and I'm going to go through all of that, but when you read Deuteronomy chapter 9, you find out that this was a big problem in Israel. Israel kept forgetting God. This is what the Lord says. When it says, there's so many here, I don't want to go into. Verse 1, O Israel, you have crossed over to Jordan today. Deuteronomy 9, verse 1. 
go in and and you and you go in to dispossess the land greater and mightier than you cities greater and forfeited up to heaven a people great and tall the descendants of anakin i mean in other words the lord says all these blessings when you come into the land and by the way it's about time you stop blaming the problems of the next generation on slavery it's about time you stop blaming the problem of this generation on slavery and colonialism. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. It's easy sometimes to blame this. Well, you know, there's no, 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 no. God's word has been made available to you. We are teaching the word. If you want it, you can get it. Hallelujah. There's no black man or white man or red man or white man. No boss. Or no, nobody's stopping you. Stop blaming a system that has been dead for over 100 years. Don't let the devil keep tying you to history when the promise of the future is right before you. The Lord says, when you come into a land to, to dispossess this, to own it, we're here in Jamaica, we're in a free country. So many opportunities. So many freedom, we act stupid. Huh? So many freedom, we're just ridiculous. So don't tell me about slavery or this system and i was growing up in yalas everybody the babylonian system marched on babylon no 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 that's a, that's an excuse face the responsibility of the next generation i was talking to some young men the other day and they were so hopeless in fact they were telling me no, 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 Pastor. You, nothing going to change. Nothing. In fact, they didn't even say nothing is going to change. They say nothing will change. Nothing can change. They have lost all expectation of good. I call on the fathers to not provoke the children to wrath. I call on you today. So the Lord says, and I'll read this and we'll finish for today. In Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 4. Do not think in your heart... After the Lord your God has cast out these people before you, saying, because of my righteousness, the Lord has brought me in to possess this land. No. The Lord says it is because of the wickedness of these nations that the Lord is driving them out before you. It is not because of your righteousness or of the uprightness of your heart that you go in to possess their land, but because of the wickedness of the nations that the Lord your God drives them out from before you, that he may fulfill the word of the Lord which he swore to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Therefore, therefore, verse 6, understand that the Lord your God is not giving you this land to possess because of your righteousness. For you are a stiff-necked people. Remember, do not forget how you provoke the Lord to wrath in the wilderness. And he went on to list so many different ways that the people provoked the Lord. So the bottom line that the Lord is saying to us today, the Lord your God was not able to bring them into the promised land because he hated them brought them out to kill them yet they are your people your inheritance from whom you brought out by your mighty power and by your outreach hand that's how moses was able to intercede he said lord the next generation they look bad they look terrible lord the next generation they're not coming to church they seem to have no interest in the things of god yet Verse 29 of Deuteronomy 9. Yet they are your people. Yet they are your inheritance. Whom you brought out by your mighty power. And by your outstretched hand. Let's trust in the Lord. To bring a revival in the next generation. Let's do our part. To engage the next generation to be attentive to the next generation and to bring over the values of God and the, to protect and preserve what we receive from the past generation so that it can be passed on to the next generation. 
Something happened because even though Manasseh ignored the way of God, Hezekiah's grandson, something got to his life and revival came. Don't underestimate the power of God to bring change, to bring transformation. Don't be overwhelmed, brothers and sisters. Trust in God for the future of Jamaica. Trust in God for the future of your community. Trust in God for the future of the next generation. Do it God's way and God will bless our children. They will not be full of wrath. Oh, there's going to be a day when, when our children will not be full of wrath. There will be a day when our children will love each other and they will care for each other. There will be a day when there's peace in our community, where there won't be gunshots raining down all over the place. There will be a day when we can live peacefully, when we, so where Jamaica under God can increase in beauty, fellowship and prosperity, where we will play our part in advancing the welfare of the whole human way, race. There will be a day when there will be peace and Amantigo Bay will be the friendly city all over again. There will be a day when our sons will marry and our daughters will marry and 85% of our children will not be born out of wedlock. There will not be angry children in our schools. Our, our teachers will not be running away from the classroom instead of running to the classroom. There will be a day when they will love the Lord. There will be a day when the people will be served, when the government systems will not be up in the top only, but people will be served by servant leaders in all areas of our government. There will be a day when the justice will run down like a river, when the little man will get justice. They don't have to wait two years. Oh, brothers and sisters, you've got to bring hope back. you got to believe and trust in God. What do you trust in God for? I mean, those are the kind of things that I'm trusting for in our nation. Father, we trust you. We trust you, Lord, that Jamaica might and may and will be under you, Lord. It will increase in beauty, increase in fellowship, increase in prosperity, because you are that kind of a God. Lord, I pray that you will stir a renewed trust in you by those who listen today that they will take the responsibility for the next generation by elevating their trust in you, preserving the treasures of the past generation and transferring it to the new generation. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you so much for joining me again here on a time of reflection. Take responsibility. Ask the Lord what you need to do for the next generation and he'll show you for those of you the Lord is touching your heart and you want to equip yourself to be used by God in this generation and in the next generation I want to invite you to check out our website for Emmanuel Caribbean University it's called ecujamaica.com ecujamaica.com you can find out about our programs our ministry, the bachelor in ministry leadership certificate level programs workshops seminars a lot of teaching programs that we are doing. You can find out all about it there and you can give us a call. You can send us an email and we'd love to talk with you. God bless you so much. Thank you for joining us during this time of reflection. Remember to like and share all of our social media platform on YouTube, on Facebook. Thank you those of you on channel 253 for joining me. Remember that if you have any prayer requests, you can call 876 952 3436 or 876-979-6856. Or go to the Faith Temple, AOG.org website, and you can find out about the ministry here, how they can continue to be a blessing to you. All right, God bless you. Join us next week, Monday to Tuesday at 12 noon, Wednesdays at 1 o'clock, Thursdays and Fridays, 12 p.m. for the time of reflection from Faith Broadcasting Network. This is Dr. Burnett, Peter Burnett. Good to be with you. Trust in the Lord. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Lord. I know that faith is easy when everything's going down. Now can you still All the things around
seems to quickly fade away. There's just one thing I really want to know. Will you let go? Will you stand on my word? Seems impossible. I trust you, Lord. Would you believe? I trust you, Lord. Every promise that I made, you will receive. Oh, my child. I know. When I love one life came to an end And when they had to reach you You said you'll never love again Oh my, but will you trust that I can help you And I'll never turn away Oh my, will you trust me child Say, say.